Okay, it's 2024. We're giving you more. Welcome to the M&M Show. My name is Michael. And my name is Michelle. And we are here to talk to you today about being committed in an uncommitted generation. How do you stay committed in an uncommitted generation? Well, take the G. Got to look where others won't to have what others don't. Take the O. Obligated to do what others won't, to have what others can't. Mm. And lastly, take the D. Mm. Don't get sucked into the casino of convenience. So how do you stay committed in an uncommitted generation? God. Uh, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly uh, of the of the of the belief that everybody's committed. Everybody's committed. Yeah. You're either committed to excellence. Uh, Or you're committed to uh, a lack of excellence. You're committed to mediocrity or you're committed to doing things great. You have to commit to something to keep doing it over and over and over and over. You have a trust issue. Oh, you have trust issues. You're committed to them (laughs) more than something else. Right. Everybody is committed. Uh, It just depends on what you're committed to. Now, we don't want to be committed to commitment only. (laughs) We need something greater than commitment in itself. And I love what the Bible says. Second Chronicles chapter 16 just says God strengthened those He strengthens people whose hearts are fully committed. Uh, So even if right now you're watching this, oh, I'm so weak. All you got to do is get more committed. All you got to do is get more committed. Uh, And God doesn't strengthen the uncommitted. He strengthens the committed. So we we, got to commit to something greater than ourselves. We got to commit to God. You know, I love the the story of this this coach. He was like trying to get these guys committed. You guys need to be committed. And he's telling them, did Michael Jordan ever quit? And they and, and the team stands up and he's asking this team. They go, no. They says, did, 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 did Kobe Bryant ever quit? No. Did Messi ever quit? Did Ronaldo ever quit? No. And then he, he asked them, he goes, did Elmer McAllister ever quit? And they go, quiet. He goes, did Elmer McAllister? Finally, one kid stands up and he goes, coach. Coach goes, yes. He goes, who's Elmer McAllister? Right. <laughs> he goes, exactly. He quit. <laughs> Fair enough. Nobody remembers <laughs> quitters. <laughs> right. Don't be an Elmer. Yeah, don't be Elmer McAllister. You don't want to quit. So if you quit and you're watching this, I want to challenge you to recommit. Right? Right. If you quit, I want to challenge you already. Recommit. Don't worry. Um, there, 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 there are some awesome things that can come out of being really super committed to God. You know, I, I also looked at the story of a kid. These kids were playing. And, um, you know, they're like saying nasty things to each other. They're mad, this, that, and the other. And they're playing in this icy pond. Uh, and then uh, the older brother's about 12. The other kid is about like nine. And uh, one kid slips out onto the ice, falls through the ice. Mm. The 12 year old freaks out. He's just like, there's no one around but these old people sitting there. He runs over, yanks a tree branch, beats on the ice because his brother went under the ice. Oh, no. So he saw his brother under the ice, like trying to, like this, get out. trying to get out. And he, and he broke the ice and pulled his brother to save him, pull him out. And then the ambulances get there and the, um, and they're like, how did this, who did it? How'd this kid, uh, where's the, where's the crowbar? How did you get this? How did he get his, his brother out? And, uh, and they pull the branch and they show the branch and they look at the tree and they go, how does this 12 year old do that? They don't even believe it. And then uh, an old guy goes, I'll tell you how, how he got him out. I'll tell you exactly how he got him out. And then everyone's sitting there waiting for the old guy's answer. And he goes, he didn't have anybody tell him he couldn't do it. Hmm. That that's 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 the power of social media. It's telling everybody you can't be committed, what you can't do. And just like that little boy hmm. who didn't have a bunch of people telling him he couldn't break his brother out, he wasn't strong enough. He like conjured up some strength he didn't even know was there. Uh, and in the same right. way, I think I think social media is doing a really good job telling everybody they can't be committed. <laughs> Um, well, I think too, yeah, in, in that sense, you're saying that I think culture has uh, not just social media, but okay. culture says it's okay to not be committed. Yeah, exactly. So it's okay if to have kind of maybe cheat, right? Yeah, it it's is. It's okay or even emotionally Options. cheat. Like that's super okay. Yeah, Everyone's exactly. emotionally cheating or flirting on their spouse or their girlfriend or boyfriend. I think women more, but yeah. 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 So so I think that's the issue. 
Yeah, and I think you know, you go on YouTube, and yeah, maybe I'm I'm saying the little boy is is like maybe you, you're out there. I can't do it. <laughs> Don't listen to what people tell you. You can't do. I mean, people told me all the men, especially the guys, you can't be committed to just one woman. You have videos out there teaching you yeah. to be uncommitted that you can't do it. And just like that little boy, nobody told him he couldn't break his brother out, and that's the reason why he did it because he didn't have somebody in his ear saying you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. And I do think society is saying women can't commit. You're going to get hurt. I do think society is saying, men, you can't get, you can't commit. You got to try your options, you know? And so. I, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think social it's media. It's a mindset. It it's is. It's a mindset. We've accepted the mindset. And uh, biblically, it says we should stay faithful to the end. So, um, and I'll, I'll find the scripture, but it just talks a lot about just always being in love with your spouse. Because I was reading uh, one of the comments, you actually. You still I still, love? yeah. yeah. It, it, ooh, it, 20, uh, what are we at now? 20, 20. How many years we've been married? 21. 21 years. 21, 21 years. In Come March. On. In March. Come on, that's commitment. It is. And I, I, I tell you what, I did not have the mindset of commitment, guys. I'm, I'm when, I, when I got a book. No, 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 not with you, but in the world. She's worked it. My parents were divorced, so their mind, my mindset was I actually yeah. didn't want to get married. Yeah. I only got married because I needed to get a visa at yeah. the time, not yeah. with Michael, but in the world. And uh, I thought it would be it's fine to just um, have a long-term partner. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, wasn't but... a religious person at all, so didn't have any uh, spiritual values then. But, uh, yeah, I had a complete mindset of if this doesn't work, I'm, a, I'm an independent woman. I am out of here. I am not going to take junk from yeah. my partner. Yeah. I, I, I've, I can get my own roof on my head. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? That's the mindset. Yeah, see, and I think even hearing you say that, <clears throat> it started early when you got your heart broken. And I think, um, you know, you hear it all, all, you know, the relationships break up because of finances. Relationships People can't be committed because they don't work out the finances. People can't be committed because they don't work out uh, the, the emotional intimacy for the woman. People don't, the, the physical intimacy for the man. All these great, great reasons for being uncommitted to quit. To quit. All these great reasons. But I've learned uh, after 25 years doing this that the reason 21, people, tw yeah. well, well, 21 together, but as a, as a Christian, right. uh, the reason people don't commit and break up is because they get a broken heart. Mm. whether it's an emotionally broken heart and they were like, dang, I thought this guy was going to be different. A physically broken heart. I thought our physical relationship wasn't going to change. Well, you had some kids, things change. You know, we get our hearts broken and then we get uncommitted because we, we had a heart broken or we had a, uh, not a heart broken. An injury. Heart, an injury. Heartbreak. And uh, I love that whole Kintsugi art thing. Right. Principle. Right. Maybe you can talk about that. Right, so in Japanese art, it's a beautiful uh, form of art where they have pottery. The Japanese are really known for making pottery. And uh, one of the things they, uh, this art form has become very, very beautiful is that broken, so broken pieces of pottery were glued back together using super solid gold. Yes. And as a result of that, the pot actually became stronger. And more valuable. And more valuable and quite beautiful because the breakage and then the the, the subsequent uh, melding of that pot together, very beautiful creative designs were, 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 were able to be formed from these pottery. And stronger and more beautiful. Yep. So if we have this mindset, I think, as Christians going into – relationships is that we are consistently probably 100% most likely going to get hurt because yep. we have two human beings yep. coming together with very different opinions and as we you know and we're just doing life together so yep. sometimes it's your first time being a mom it's your first time you know having two kids it's your first time uh hitting old age or middle age so we're always evolving and I think having that mindset of this art mm -hmm. is just going, okay, as we evolve, as we hurt each other, let's continue. And I think the word of God is, is the gold. It's, it's the, the gold that fills in the cracks. Exactly. It fills it in and makes it's the, the blood of Jesus actually. Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah, that's true. Cause um, I think of the, those little lines, it's kind of like blood the veins, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. Like that's veins. Powerful. Yeah. And I'm glad you said blood because that kind of segues into what people aren't looking for. Cause most people, when, okay, let's get down to it. You look in a relationship, you look to your past you look to your parents and you go, I don't know if I want to have what my parents had. <clears throat> I don't know if I want to be like my dad. I don't want, and we looked at all these bad examples. And so it's like, okay, 
Well, when it comes to being committed in an uncommitted uh, generation, what do you look to? Do you look to your parents? Do you look to your past? Do you look to, you know, all these examples? And I, and, I, and as I said at the outset, you got to look where others want to have what others don't. You got to look to God. Right. And Most people know. want commitment yeah. and will not look to God. They will not do it. They're like, they will look to Jordan Peterson. They will look to uh, every psychology book. They will look to the gym. They will look to beauty. They will look to money. Look to everything. But or look God. to someone else. Look to someone else. Their needs. Exactly. And you got to look where others want to have what others don't. I mean, we see it. The celebrities aren't, they're not doing awesome. No. Right? Rich money ain't it. You can't look to money. You can't buy a good marriage. You can't buy it. That's it's priceless. Right. It's, it's awesome to have the kingdom. And so, and I, I and so I think you got to look, you got to look, you got to look where others want to have what mm -hmm. others don't. Mm -hmm. You got to look to God. You got to, there's something got to be greater than the relationship. And I'm going to persuade you, if you're watching this, I want to persuade you, we, we we focus on commitment. That's what that's the word you hear nowadays. It's not about commitment. It's about a covenant. The byproduct of commit of, of, of a covenant is commitment. Mm. And you, you make a commitment. That's like a human thing. But biblically, a covenant, you cut a covenant. Covenants are cut. Commitments mm. are made. So when and the greatest person who, who cut a covenant is God Almighty. We're supposed to be dead right now. Right. He said in, in Genesis, he says, hey, if you guys sin, I'm going to annihilate you guys. Right. <laughs> but, he, but we sinned and God didn't stop being committed because he had a covenant. Exactly. You can break your commitment, but you can't break a covenant. And God made a covenant with us. He says, hey, I love you guys, even though you guys are, are bad people and covenants are cut. So there's blood. There's got to be blood involved. Right. Like you said, he's like, blood. so so what he did, he cut the um, the he cut the uh, he made coverings for Adam and Eve. Right, he had a sacrifice. He had a sacrifice, see. but that wasn't the first cut. The first cut was was the woman from the rib. That's right. The first blood came out from her. So, how do you do that as far as a husband and wife? What's the difference? Well, you got to make a covenant with God. Your covenant oh, okay. you make with God gives you the commitment with the woman of uh, God. Okay, gotcha. And so, people just want to make a commitment. No, no, you need a covenant relationship with God. You first. need God. You need God. In order to have a co committed relationship? Exactly. That's my point. How does that help you, though? Well, because now you have a standard that isn't emotional. Now you have a standard that doesn't change with time, that doesn't change where you have kids, doesn't change where you, you have the Bible. And most people don't want to go by the Bible. They want to go by their emotions. They want to go by their, where they're at in life. They want to go by how they feel. And uh, I don't feel, I don't feel like, I feel restricted in this marriage. Every marriage is going to be filled. I feel bored. Oh my goodness. Life is full of boring moments. What are you talking about? You right. don't just quit, right? You don't quit. You don't give up when you have a covenant. Gotcha. When you have a covenant. Sealed by blood of Christ. Sealed, you nailed it. You sealed by blood. Seal the deal. Right. So again, covenant means to cut. You don't, you don't make covenants. You cut them, right? You cut them. And so when God cut a covenant with us, he showed that, hey, he, he's committed to us. But have we cut a covenant with God? Mm. Is that why the circumcision thing came about? Is that a covenant? Yeah, that shows a covenant. Say, shows, that shows, shows a covenant. That we are people of God. Exactly. And so when you, when, when the circumcision happened. In the Old Testament. In the Old Testament. Uh, now the New Testament says we got to circumcise our, our hearts. hearts. Yeah. So you got to cut all this stuff out of your heart, right? So you can have a covenant relationship, not only with God, but with someone else. Um, and so, yeah, you got to cut a covenant. That's, that's good. Yeah, so that's that's uh, I, again. If I wasn't clear, you're not going to get the commitment without the covenant, right? You got to look to God and get a covenant relationship with God. We are together not because we just are so committed and we're better people. No, when we want to be uncommitted, okay. What we is remember God's? the blood of Christ. We remember the blood. We look to who do you know? Wait a second. He, yeah. <laughs> what does God say? How, what does God you know, say? You know what I mean? How, look, what, look where others won't. Oh, yeah, to have Get what others into that don't. word. Look where others won't. And isn't your second point? Do what others don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> look what other look where others I won't to have exactly. Forgive. Where are you looking when things get rough? Where are you looking? You looking on the internet? What are you googling, bro? Where are you going? Let me look at your internet history. Where are you looking? You building a real good, funly little happy relationship with your coworker right there, and you know you having. Where are you looking when things get rough? You know. Satan did, it, the fall of man wasn't, it was like when man was single, okay, mm. he was all, it was all good, okay? And, and, and you know, you go through the Bible, it's called the fall of man. It's not the fall of man, it's f the fall of committed relationships. Because Satan did not attack until they got together. Right, until they were married. Yeah, once they were married, uh, he because he, there's three things that Satan hates, okay? Uh, he does not want you to be committed. 
for three reasons. Number one, uh, it glorifies God. It glorifies God. Number two, it makes you act like God. If you have a, you know, you get married and you got to go by the Bible, you got to act like God. <laughs> you got to sur- surrender. You got to forgive. You got to do all the things that God does, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and number three, he hates kids. Yeah, Satan offspring. hates kids. Godly offspring. Yeah, that's why most of us, we go, okay, well, when we were raised, we had bad relationships. You look to those relationships, the kids are the byproduct of the bad relationships. So Satan knows that. So he knows if he can keep bad relationships going, all it's going to do is produce a bunch of people that have trust issues. My parents never stay together. Right. Dysfunction. My dysfunction. So he hates God. He hates you acting like God, and he hates God's kids. Right. He hates children. Right. So that's the reason why Satan is. So anyway, you got to look where others want to have what others don't. Number two, you got to also got to be obligated. You got to be obligated to do what others want. There it is. Uh, to have what others can't. You got to be obligated to do something. You got to make a covenant. Got to become a Christian. Well, yeah, and you got to go by the Bible. Like we said, you got to do what others want, which is, I think, the biggest thing in relationships is forgiveness. Yes. And 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 spiritual forgiveness is is really forgetting. Yes. Because I think sometimes in the world we're like, I forgive you, mm-hmm. but there's like super deep resentment and and uh, bitterness there, mm. you know. So I think it takes that Christian spirit, the Holy Spirit. To forgive like others did. Yeah, but, but, but again, we again we've we've given the covenant of forgiveness, haven't exactly, we? Exactly. And that certainly helps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to so, forgive because you're like, well, God forgave me. Who am I to hold a grudge? Here? Ding 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 ding. Yeah. Christ's example helps me do what's right. Yeah. So if you're like really down on somebody about their sins, but then you start looking at yours, I don't know why. It just you stop being so mad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happens when you like, you do this, you do this, and then you start looking at your stuff. You're like. Dang. You know, it's like, well, yeah. You know, I mean, it just, it, I mean, the playing ground is even, is even yeah. at the cross. And so you have relationships nowadays, you see it played out in the media where uh, these slogans, all men are dogs, right? They're, she's for the streets. No, she's not for the streets. Okay. She's an awesome woman and she's been treated like that. Uh, all men are not dogs, all men are men. Right. <laughs> Right. But because of our terrible upbringing, the bad things that we look, we look to the Internet. We look to our past. We look to our parents who may not do a good job. We look to everybody but God. Right. Who's still committed to us. We, we can look to the wrong things. Yeah. Things and, are, and I love what we what we often share when we do marriage counseling in the first session. You always sort of pose the question, how long does it take to become a doctor? Exactly. Seven to ten years. How Eight long years. does it take to engineer? Four or five years. How long does it take to uh, be a. NBA athlete, mm. lifetime. Mm. Ha- and then you say, how long does it take to get married? married? Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, you can just Saturday go, night, go, to baby. Lo- go alone get, or get a hookup. Exactly. Then- yes. So my point in that is that the people don't really understand how to have great marriages because right. it's not – there's no course we take at university. There's no nowhere in school. Are we, we never taught anything about marriage. That is like – crazy we talk about history we know about microbes we know about human anatomy can you imagine so like there's this deep there's such a uh what's the word lack yeah of information and this is why we're doing what we're doing exactly because you, you want to help people you can't go to the to university and learn how to be a man a real godly man and learn how to be a husband learn how to be a father learn how to, and even marriage so just for so you it's a very satanic thing actually it's very satanic yeah and it's and, and marriage and it, it actually sets you up for the fact that you're going to get your heart broke okay yep. you just this is part of the deal <laughs> when that guy gets up there, he says, for better or for worse, <laughs> richer or poorer, sickness. And, 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 and it doesn't say uh, 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 till, till it, one of us gets not, not till off. emotions do you part. No, not till finances do you part. Right. No, till death do so, you part. You can stay committed. Yeah. Even marriage. When we go negative red, I'm out of here. <laughs> As far as the financial book. Yeah. So, so, so No, it doesn't. It doesn't. So that's why I say it's it's easy to be committed at a carnival. You know, right. carnival, man, you got the ride, you got the candy floss. Amen. You go from one ride to the next. It's an adventure. It's an adventure when you're at a Woo! carnival. Woo! 
life is not a carnival. No. It's not all candy floss and ice cream and we want it and big, big it's, teddy It's not bear. Disneyland. It's not. It's right. not. Like, there's no way. It's going to have some days where you don't have, you're not at the carnival. <laughs> We right. are at the uh, construction site. We're at the construction site, baby. You got some hard hat. You got some boots. Dirt. dirt. We got some concrete. You better roll you up some, your sleeves, roll lady. Roll your sleeves up to get in this woman's heart. And go, please, please. In Jesus' so name, sad. woman. You know, so. Oh, and then me. I mean, she has to deal with me. So what? you can't. You got you to gotta stay committed, guys. You got to stay. Right. Marriage sets you up for you. Go get your heart, bro. It's going to people. Sending us messages saying, how do you do it without getting your heart broke? Oh, you might as well get a plant. <laughs> Whoever asks those, you go get your plant. A plant, and even a plant's gonna break your heart. It's, it's gonna die you one don't day. water it, it's gonna die. You know, you're gonna if this is a part of life. Yeah. And even like I love the marriage thing, because it's like it sets you up. You're gonna get you're gonna get a broken heart. Yeah, get, yeah, yeah. We but, need to say that at Kingdom Woodies now. Exactly. But where do you, you look? Break my heart, I'm staying. Exactly. I'm all in. But then that's the question. Where do you look? Right. Do you look where others won't to have what others don't do you look to God? Do you look okay? What does God want me to do? Okay, and then after you do that, are you obligated to do what others want to have what others can't? Are you obligated? Obligate? I gotta forgive. Right. It's not a choice. It's not a choice. Not I gotta get divorced because I I'm entitled to my rights. No, you gotta you gotta forgive him. You gotta forgive her. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. Totally. One of the things I love too, because I can be very critical, um, and uh, I love the scripture that just says, you know. Uh, get that plank out of your own eye <laughs> yeah. uh, before you try and take out. Jesus the, is funny. He's a, he's a carpenter. Say, get that plank. <laughs> yeah. So what always helps me is when I'm critical, I'm like, okay, the Bible says I have a plank and Michael has a speck. Mm. So I, I, that's very convicting. Mm-hmm. So the minute I'm critical, I'm like, okay, I got to deal with my sin. What kind of the, what what sin am I in? Yeah. You know, where, I, I am not seeing. I'm seeing a plank in your eye, but exactly. the Bible says I actually have a plank in mine. Yeah. So and it's so even, that's just a good heart check because every yeah. time I do that, I'm like, okay. Deal with your heart, and then I'm less likely to get critical because yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be in yeah, sin. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. And then for me, I'm like the Bible says, uh, "Husbands, wash your wife to make her radiant." If she is not radiant, if I see a vein in her forehead, if she's giving me the crazy eyes, my wife's eyes start shaking. I'm like, "Oh no, this is not good," and it's your fault. That means if she's not fired, if she's not happy, she's not radiant. It's because I'm a terrible leader. Yeah. Uh, I, and I that, I take that serious. So when I look to the, what the word of God says and my wife is not reading, she's not happy, she's not submitting, she doesn't want to be with me, she doesn't want to uh, listen to what I got to say, she doesn't want my advice, she doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't say I need you, these kind of things. There's an right. issue with me. I got to look to what God says about when your, your wife is not where she's at. What does the Bible say? Not what does your emotions say? I found out, I found out that my love life got stronger, not by getting her flowers, but by doing the dishes. Acts of service. She's like, you better do the dishes. I don't need gifts. I need acts of service. I bought you some flowers. What what in the world is this? Amen. Thanks for the flowers. (laughs) She's like, thanks for the flowers, right? Meanwhile. Meanwhile, can you help me take the flowers? Pile of dishes over here. Oh, man, cold-blooded. But uh, I think, yeah, I think that is one thing that you do really well. It's a deep conviction that Michael has um, that it's the husband's job to make the wife's radiant. Mm. Not the disciple or not the Mm. church, not the Mm. Bible talk leader. Mm. And I think. Not um, society. Yeah, not YouTube. Not YouTube. Um, right. And I think when you've done that and when you've, you really, one of the things you ask when we have marriage counseling, uh, marriage time with other disciples is, yep. is you, you sometimes, Michael, would compliment the brother for a radiant wife. And other times he uh, really goes in and asks a lot of questions to the brother. Yeah. If the brother me. shows up and he looks amazing, <laughs> tie, hmm, haircut, hmm, and the wife shows up and she looks like, you know, somebody has been... Uh, she's been mugged by a bag of nickels or uh, a small Ow. bag of uh, uh, of one p coins. Somebody's been hitting. Her, you know, she just looks like she's like that. Then, oh man, the brother is he's gonna get it because you got to. Your wife is your flower. She's beautiful. She's awesome. I love my wife very much. She's you know next to God. She's the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Mm. And um, I feel terrible if she's not reading. I feel right. Wrong. I'm not a man. I'm not. I'm not being what God's called me to be. I look to God. And then lastly, I want to say this one here, baby. I just want to talk about uh, getting sucked into the casino of convenience. Wow. Getting sucked into the convenient. This this casino. casino. You know, you go to casinos. You gamble. You gamble. Um, and I think people enter into relationships with the idol of entitlement. First of all, 
Uh, you know, and they say, yeah, is this person worthy of my commitment? You know, you, you get that people straight away, like don't commit. Cause like, is this person worthy? Um, and I think, I think that's, that's an issue. Uh, but I, I think the other thing is, you know, you go into casinos, you're gambling, you're going to all the different slot machines and all that kind of, kind of stuff, you know, it's a casino. Uh, and, 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 and casinos have options. Mm. <laughs> that's this is a problem in the world the illusion of options instagram which is instagram facebook there's all these options out there you can do all these kind of things and uh i'm here to call brown grass on that mm. brown grass right grass is not always greener there's brown grass sometimes right. you can look over there and you're like oh maybe i can do another option i want to leave this relationship right it's convenient now i'm hurt i'm in the casino convenience where i just want to look around and, and, and then you want to, you know, no, it's the grass is not always greener. It's sometimes it's it's brown grass, the the illusion of options. Um, you know, I think that's hurt commitment nowadays, dating sites and Instagram and, uh, you know, all, all this, you know. And, and if you do that, you're gambling, you're right. gambling. You don't want to gamble with your life. You don't want to gamble with your, your relationship just because of convenience, the ability to see so many options that are out there. And to think that, you know, I always say this, uh, the grass may be greener, but you don't know that other dude's water bill. <laughs> That's you know, true. you know, people are like, oh, Michael, Michelle, we want to be with you guys. Well, I mean, you know, can we imitate you? Yeah. You don't know our water. You don't know the water bill. This woman has paid the tears <laughs> to have this relationship. You don't know the water bill I paid to have the grass greener. You know, hey, how can we be like that? So right. the grass isn't always green. You know, there's a water bill that goes with a greener right. set of grass. Yeah. It's usually brown grass when you just want to go by convenience. Yeah. So anyway. Success. Success uh, is, 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 is work, right? Nothing comes easy in life. Nothing. So if someone's got a great marriage, there's a lot of work that went into that bill. marriage. And I think um, the entitlement generation that we live in wants to take the elevator mm -hmm. to a successful marriage or like mm -hmm. as you say download the application mm -hmm. to a good marriage but uh that doesn't exist no. so what what exists is 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 the day in day out grind uh of putting in the work being like christ to each other uh that uh, that end up in 20 years you look back and you're like oh my goodness yes wow yes that was amazing because oftentimes you don't feel like you're a super successful or you're not like you're not because we're always growing and, and, and learning. Learning quite a bit all the time. Uh, all the time. So, but you can look back and go, well done, 21 years, faithful, amen. And I think, I, you know, I always make fun of myself. I try to, we try to keep it light. I try to keep the show lighthearted because if you don't, if you don't laugh, you will cry. I'm telling yeah. you, you better start laughing. Um, but uh, I remember we, we moved into, uh, our, we got our first house and that, that we had this, there was this, this Mexican guy that lived next door to us. And this guy's, his, his lawn looked like a golf course. It was a Incredible. I was like, oh my goodness. And I just saw him out there doing a couple little clips like this. And I thought, okay, I can do that. After the first year, I'm like, okay, mine doesn't look like that. I finally talked to him and this guy's water bill. He was like, oh, I leave the water on all night. I was like, oh my goodness. Right. And that's kind of where I got that. I was like, wow, his grass was greener, but he was paying a lot of more, a lot more than I saw. It wasn't just him, me in the afternoon on a Saturday, seeing him like trimming the hedges. Right. He was running his his sprinkler through the night. Right, right, right. And uh, I'm like, wow, you're spending a thousand dollars just on your. <laughs> it's not worth uh, it. I don't know about. I'll take. I'll take. I'm okay with my little brown grass, little patch, and a couple. You mow the lawn right here. So again, don't look to other people. Don't think the options are this. I mean, it, it could be brown grass. So, so in conclusion, how to stay committed and uncommitted? You got to look. You gotta look where others want to have what others don't. Okay, you gotta be obligated to do what others want to have what others can't. And lastly, don't get sucked into the casino of convenience. Right. Stay committed. Don't right. look around. Don't gamble with your relationship. Don't gamble your relationship. Don't look for green grass, greener grass, greener pastures. There's a bill. It's probably brown grass. We love you very much. Stay committed in this uncommitted generation. Thank you.